Hello, this is Marty Storer coming to you from, well, I'm in New Hampshire, and these guys are Victor Ashkenazi, his black, Alan Tish from California is white, and they are, they've just started the finals of the Masters, also known as the Concordia Jackpot in Montreal. So it went 4-1 slot, 4-2 hit, 6-5 hit where Victor just rolled 6-5 to hit, and now he has rolled a 2-6. They're playing very quickly so far. He's uh, got his back checker off of off of that target um, five-point of Allen's. That is a 3-1 from Allen. He could hit on his 11-point, or he could make his five-point. Making the five-point is quite reasonable. It's a lasting asset. And that is a three, looks like a three, two for Victor. And he, he hits and makes his own, on his 11 point and makes that point. Clear, clearly right. I'm having a little bit, bit of trouble seeing the dice on this feed, but it's a two six for Allen. Um, bar 23 and 24, 18. No real palatable alternative there with and now now a six three for Victor so he could he could hit on his bar point and uh, gain gain a tempo and step up with a three to Allen's four point or he could just make his five point Victor likes to make lasting assets too and so he makes he makes the five point he would have left a fair number of return shots otherwise that is a six one it looks like from Allen. Yes, a 6-1. And he immediately makes the 18 point with the 6, and he slides his back checker up to 1. I'm not so sure it wasn't a little better to lift the block from the 9 point. But Allen wants to get his back checker into range. He wants to keep the builder on the 9 point. Looks like a 6-2 for Victor. Now he can he can hit that that same blot on, on Allen's 9 point. So I'd like to sort of introduce the players at some point, but they're really, they're really going, uh, going quickly here. Allen's rolled three one. He's anchored up on the twenty two and six to five safe. Let's say Victor has maybe a slight edge because he's ahead in the race. Fewer checkers back. I think this is a three. It almost looks like a 3-2, but unfortunately they're playing with a white die, which is hard to read. Apologies for that. But it's a 3x. It might be a 3-1. 3-2, I think Victor would have, if it were a 3-2, he would have played quickly 16 to 11. He's just making his 11 point and playing safe. But, oh, it's a 5-3. Okay, that that's... No, Five, I don't know. Oh, a six five. I'm sorry, it was six five. So he played sixteen to five, and now the six three for Allen. He, point, he points on his two point. This is quite reasonable because one quarter of the time, Victor's going to stay on the bar, and he comes in with a four six, and he's thinking whether to lift his blot from the eleven point, which he does. He sees no reason to leave blot and come, come up to the 15 point and a 3-1 for Allen he doesn't have anything much except to hit loose on his 4 point he's got a good holding game from the 22 and the 18 point that was a 4-3 apparently from Victor he hits with a 4 and he comes out to the 18 point. He could have come down to the uh, 10 point for a builder, but he wants to minimize blots, I guess. And that is a 3 6 reply in with 3 and hitting on the bar point. Alan Tish hits on his own bar point, and Victor it looks like a double one, which is Joker, really. He can make his four point and Unheap from his five and six point. 
And the left-handed Alan Tish has rolled 6-4. That's a very nice roll. He makes his bar point and comes out. Spare checker out to the 18 point with a 4. Now, Victor has got a clear edge. You know, Alan's two point is a bit deep for his liking. And it looks like Victor has rolled an anti-joker double one there. Oh my God, it can't be anything else because he's breaking a six point. And he does, he, play, he plays, he, he breaks his six point, he leaves his six point slotted. The double one was an, he rolled a double one joker and then he rolled an anti-joker. He, he left a six point slotted wishing to remake it. And Alan hits with a three two. He, Hits on the on the uh, nineteen point Victor six point, and he he uh, moves his spare check on the eighteen to the sixteen point. He wants to get some outfield control, and suddenly, you know, suddenly Victor is um, you know his, his board has gone down from a three point board to a two point board, and he's lost the critical six point. So, Allen has rolled a six. Six five, perhaps. Again, I apologize for the quality of the stream here. It's a bit blurry. What was that? That was a six. Six four. Nineteen thirteen eight uh, twenty two eighteen. Six four was the roll by Alan last time. So a 3-2 for Victor. He's played a 2 to make the 22 anchor. That's a good good thing to do because now both of the checkers are, both of the back checkers can see daylight. A 3, he decides to slot his 2 point. He could have slotted his 1 and kept builders diversified, but he slots the superior point. That looks like a 3-2 from Allen. 13-10, he makes the 16 point. Now he's got seven points made, but he's got some good freedom of movement. Victor's got a weak board. And with a 3-2, Victor reinforces his eight point. Again, he could have made his two point, but then the three was not too palatable. He gives himself the most compact position possible. Allen, uh, looks like Allen has rolled a 3-2. And he simply makes the 10 and brings a checker to the 11, breaking his midpoint. He doesn't need seven points, so he's just, I guess he still has seven points. He's traded one for another. Now double threes from Victor. He's going to, is that legal? That's legal, yeah, eight to two, four to one twice. So that was a good roll for Victor. He he keeps plenty of contact against against the seven point position in case Allen has to break one and leave something open. Now Allen has rolled a six four. That's a little bit problematic, and not too problematic. He can he can break his ten point. And he can add a builder to his five and a six point. That's a, actually a fine roll. A two one from Victor. I he could break his eight point and leave a single shot, which he does. He could have left a double shot and kept the eight point, but you know it's good. It's good to leave eleven shots instead of twenty. But there's an ace from Allen. Ace what? They can't quite see the other number. It looks like a five, ace five. So if he hits with an ace, which he, he's doing, the five is a bit problematic. So he moves both checkers off the 18 point. Looks like he's got um, 13 return shots. Victor doubles, doubles on the com. I can only count 13 return shots. 
let's see, he's got five, five aces and six fives. Five aces and six fives and a six four. That's 13 numbers. So I don't understand that, that, that pass. Uh, unless I missed something, unless uh, Victor hit an, an Alan Fand or something. I'm, I'm, again, I apologize. I'm, I'm not quite getting the, the dice in uh, clear and maybe timely fashion. I didn't, I didn't notice that Alan was on the bar. He did, he did have three blots and, and Victor had a stronger board, but Okay, now, so Victor split with an opening 6-3, uh, Alan double hit with a 6-5, and Victor came back with Joker double ones, hitting and making his five point. 4-1 uh, four, four from, from Alan makes the bar point, which is a, that was a nice comeback. And now 5-2 from Victor, now he's going to hit loose on the four point, and he's probably simply going to go 13-8 to eight with a five giving himself more ways to cover and some, in some cases, six to, to hit back if, if, uh, if Alan hits. But Alan rolls six, two from the bar, in with a two, and he, instead of coming out in the lion's mouth of the 18 point where many hit and covers for victory, reinforces his bar point with a, with a, with a 13 to seven with that six. So another good roll from Victor. He is making his four point. And now he's just going to make his 21 point. He's got an anchor. He's got a broken four prime, a three point board, fewer checkers back. Now, and it better come up with something good. Looks like a six two. All right, so he he's all right. He has played thirteen five. So I see Victor's clock updating, and certainly that's going to run into a double. And Allen gives up. What is what is what is this now? So it's. Maybe Victor Fan. Oh, Victor Fan. I was the, about last game. Victor after Allen hit Victor Fan, and then Allen, Allen doubled and won a point. Okay, so I was all wrong about that. I thought Victor doubled on the come with a thirteen number shot, and Allen passed. But actually, Victor Fan, Allen doubled, and Victor passed. So I apologize for that. So again, again, Allen has started with a with a four one slot. And Victor is headed again, um, moving both back checkers with his 4-1. And let's see what we got here. All right. Um, all right. I lost my, lost my video for a minute there, but I'm back. So Alan has made a four-point prime against Victor, but Victor is now making his 20 anchor with a 3-2. And uh, Alan, Alan makes, the, makes the 21 anchor, and now Vic is, Victor has rolled double sixes. The joker, he's going to bring both his back checkers out to the 14 point. With the last two, he's going to just make it his seven point, which he does. And we have a three and four from Allen. He makes his five point. And now all Victor has to do is think about think about the cube, and it looks like um, 129 pips, 157 pips is going to be the dubious take, but. But maybe, maybe you can, maybe you can still take this. I, we're inclined to pass, but Alan does not have a board made up yet. That's one factor. So Victor clears his, his, his midpoint, 
four four one for Allen. He uh, starts his four point. He wants to build a big board and hopefully hit later. He's got a trailer on his twenty four point, which is going to help in that cause. And a four six. Four is that a four six? Four six from victory. He plays safely to make his two point. That was a four six and five. One for Alan. He makes his four point. He puts a spare from his five to his four. Now a hit, a hit from uh, Alan. Even at this point, is not is not winning. And it looked like a six three. No, it wasn't a six three. Was it? What, what just happened? Five four maybe. And he played, he played 11 to 2 safely, Victor did. And that's a 2 1 from Allen. He leaves his trailer back. This is starting to look more, much, much more and more like a reasonable kind of take. Double deuce is a lot number. Yet, yeah, it's not too bad. Is it not a blot number? Yeah, he's, yeah, Victor can just make his three point. Now, if if Alan hits with a duplicated four, it's not it's not winning unless he rolls very well. So three two. Now Alan looks to me like he must get that straggler out of partly out of dodge, out of where it's vulnerable on Victor's one point. He comes up with a three, reinforces his anchor and a deuce. He just brings a builder to his five point. He could have played four to two, leaving two blots, but he decides that maybe that would motivate Victor to volunteer direct shot or something, I don't know, but Victor doesn't volunteer anything. He just goes eight to one, starts his one point. The safe play. He's still, you know, he's still ahead in the race. Um, and now we got a 6-2 from Allen. So Allen simply runs his back checker to the 13 point. He could have volunteered a shot, stayed on the 15 point, and made his three point. That was certainly a play. But he elected not to. And now Victor is able to play safe by making his one point with two checkers. And Allen's got a little breathing room. He can probably just make his, his three point now. He's rolled a six. Six what? So he's look he's looking at it. He's played oh six three. All right, so he's played thirteen to four. That's a little bit awkward. He could play could have played uh, five to two. It was less awkward, but leaves two blocks on his board in case of a. In case of a shot, Victor's roll is, I can see a two with a black die as usual, but with a white die, I can't see what it is. I can, it may be a three. Yeah, it's a three, two. I see it now. Okay. The image sharpened a little bit. So it's a three, two from Victor. So it's it's tough. I mean, he can he can uh, he can break his his five point. Two checkers from from Victor's five point, one to his three and one to his two point, would be safe. And but it would lose a lose a point on his board. He'd, he'd, he'd downgrade to a four point board, and he'd still be in some danger next turn. The alternative, I suppose, is just to go seven to two and say, all right, go ahead, do your worst and hit me. If you hit me, you probably won't cover, and then I still have a five-point board, and if I hit you back, you'll be in gamma danger. And Victor's thinking hard about this one. I see really no other alternative uh, besides the safe five to three, five to two, and the more aggressive seven to two. The seven to two is not necessarily a bargain. You know, it does it does run into 
Okay, so now he's saying, all right, now he's playing super aggressively. He's going to clear everything. And he's leaving twos and threes to hit. Now that is a that is extremely aggressive. And it looks like a six. It's a six four, I believe, which gives Alan Tish the option of hitting on the eleven point. And this is the kind of this is the kind of uh, situation that Victor had in mind when he made his aggressive 3-2 play. Now, most players would not have made such a play in a million years. Um, not to say it's wrong or anything. It's well-motivated. It's an aggressive, point-clearing play in a situation, you know, where Victor has got a, fi a five-point board versus the three-point board. And Allen elects to uh, play for play for the later shot. He he, he could have, he could have hit, would have been uh, pre pretty dangerous. But you know, sometimes you have to take a chance. I think hitting might have, might have been correct there. But he he did not hit. Victor rolled double sixes to clear everything at once, and now you know it's just looking more and more like a a lost game for Allen. So Allen makes a crossover to the to his four point. I'm not sure he's desperate for crossovers yet. He might have played thirteen to seven twice. That crossover does waste a couple of pips bearing in, and a six one for victory clears his six point. The five one Allen will probably simply make his three point. I think he's right on that. 10 to 5 and 4 to 3. 5 3 for victory. He's going to bear two, bear two checkers off, leave no blot numbers, even on his five point, even number checkers. That looks like a 6 5. And Allen is not giving up. He's leaving one checker back, hoping for a shot. Not next turn, but, but later. But Victor has rolled. Looks like double fours, 4 to the 1 point. And Allen is simply trying to, he has a slight hope of the race. He runs with a 6-2. Victor takes two off. Six three for Allen. He crosses over to the four point. Nothing better. Two off for Victor. Of course, Allen's a big underdog and he rolls the four two. In with a four, it fills his gap with a two. I'm not sure how many checkers. It looks like Victor's got seven checkers left. A three, three, two, two off. And two off for Victor. And this is Jin. Jin, I think. Yep. So that's the end now. So Victor in uh, in the third game of this match, Victor Ashkenazi is one of the world's top players. He's one of I think only three BMAB Grandmaster Class One players. The last I heard, he he was one of the three, and Michi and Mochi from Japan were the others. Alan Tish is from California. He plays on the around the circuit a lot. I think he finished second in the last chance of the Monte Carlo World Championships to the aforementioned Mochi, uh, uh, Mochiyuki Masazuki of Japan, affectionately known as Mochi. So Alan's been around the, he's, he's had some successes for sure. And this is certainly an exciting, exciting match. Um, Alan has opened with a 5-4 split, Victor has attacked and uh, Allen's hit him back. Victor's attacked again, and Allen's hit him back. This is a typical sort of fight for the fight for the five points kind of kind of deal. On the four three from Victor with four checkers back, he's going to make his own make make uh, Allen's five point instead of uh, hitting loose on his own five point. It's a concrete asset versus. Uh, a potential, a potential asset that might not quite be as strong with fewer checkers back. 
brought more checkers back. I mean, in other words, he got more checkers back. He really wanted to advance to anchor, which Victor made sure he he got. And with a four or five, um, Allen is hit again. He he could have simply made the twenty anchor, but he but he didn't. He decided to keep hitting. And it looks like a it was a four two or a five one from Victor. He Victor did abandon the twenty anchor to hit. He did not. He did not want. Um, it was a six a six two perhaps is what it was. He wasn't a, wasn't a five one because he, he made the twenty two point. But Allen came back with a Joker double three to point on Victor on his own five point. And now Victor rolls a nondescript 3-1. He makes a double anchor, comes around the corner. And he's got enough defense that Allen's not thinking of doubling yet. He rolls pretty quickly, rolls a, looks like a 5-2, a 7 to hit on Victor's 11 point. And a 4-6 by Victor. He comes, comes in and out, doesn't want to stay on the 4 point and leave a second block on his 7. And now, okay, now Allen is doubling. He's definitely got an edge, but he doesn't have the beginnings of a prime yet. And this guy says he's got the the, the, the mirror beginnings by, by, by the five point. But he's now he now he he has a four point prime roll, the Joker double three, hitting, and moving, continuing on to the seven point. And this is what I call the prime keeper's nightmare, a double four, but Victor is not in the priming business quite yet. Looks like he's more in the back game business than anything else. So four in is forced. And Victor simply slots his nine and five point. You know, timing is now important consideration. And that is a Five, five for Allen. So he's moving a lot of freight. Now he's giving up his seven point to make his two. Now that he's he's placing his store in tactics because he wants to he wants to hit a lot of checkers and just sort of zoom around the board. And um, he's he's giving up on the idea that he can prime Victor. Might be a might have been a premature um, constraining his game plan prematurely, perhaps by by giving up that that prime and making committing to making the deep two point. He's hit back um, after Victor hits and covers with a four one. Allen hits back with a with a six three, but now looked like a three one from Victor. Now he's got a triple anchor. And that's not necessarily, you know, you, you might say a double anchor is good, so a triple anchor might might be better. Well, sometimes it is, but the trouble is you're, you're tying up a lot of checkers in the backcourt, and eventually you're going to have to move some of them. But at least now Victor has a choice of which ones to move. Now we've got a double deuce from Victor. After Alan popped out to the to his 15 point, Victor's 10. So now Victor is thinking that's a double deuce. He could he could simply make make his nine point and play from there. It's a broken four prime. It's an efficient use of the forward checkers. And it's possible that Allen could get into some trouble with with a back checker. He might not be able to escape. There might be some, and that is a three of oh, a three two. He rolled. I thought it was a two two, but a three two. He comes into the three, and he safeties his outside checker. Really, really not that much else. And now we've got a three two from Victor. Now he's electing to keep the forward points. And bring spares to his. Uh... No, he's still thinking about it. Victor's still thinking about it. His clock is updating. I can see he's considering three two, but he hasn't played it yet. 
And now he, he elects to go through, he presses his clock, he's broken the 24 point, and now he's got a good, sort of a good two-way, two-way game. Or three-way, if you want, he can play a back game, a holding game, a forward game. And 2-1 from Allen, he's forced to leave a blot in his outfield, and he's diversified 6-5. to five. Now a 3-1 from Victor is not... Oh, no, excuse me, it's a 1-1, one, one, double ones. So it was a 3-1, but it was actually double ones, and he shifts his 9 point to 7 point. Now he's got a solid 4 prime, which is better than a broken 4 prime. A 2-1, so Allen moves up to the edge, trying, still trying to get out, makes the 11 point. There's a blot in his outfield. Now a 6-1 from Victor. He's going to move his... He's thinking about where to... goes all the way to the 15 point from the 22 which is a good thing to do he's uh what looked like a 4 1 from allen a 5 4 allen hit victor replied 5 4 coming out to the 16 point and the a double one now from Allen. He switches 11 to 9, so he's putting some blocking pressure on Victor's six back checkers. Now, double ones. He comes in on the 24 point and he hits. He keeps his four point prime. That's the only way to do it. He hits those moves his three point, and now it is a, a six. What was that? A 5-2, so he played a little verse that was forced in with a 2 and hitting loose with a, a 5. Allen urgently wants to get that back checker out. Victor has rolled a 1. Looks like a 1-4. And he hits he hits on the 24-point and covers. I mean, he could have... If he entered on the 4-point, he had no good 1, so he... He gives up his, his um, four prime to make a three-point board, and now he's got two checkers back, and Allen fanned on the three-point board, and now Victor rolls a double two. Very nice roll. I believe he's just going to make his four-point. Now he's got a solid four prime. Again, he's got a four-point board, best quality four-point board. And Allen fans. And Victor still has six checkers. Oh, no, he doesn't fan, does he? He, he rolls a 2-5, a maybe, and he hits He hits Victor's checker on his seven point. Now, Victor is still in the game, of course. He's got... He can, he can exit with sixes, fours, and threes and keep his board. He had to pile spares on his four and three, his, Allen's four and three points. Now four a four two from uh, from Allen. He, he plays eighteen to fourteen with a two. He could have come around the corner, but he likes to minimize shots. So there's only six four to hit him, and that's a six six, which does not hit. And he brings three out, the fifteen and one down to his nine. So Victor has now got a a presence in the outfields. Right, he's got the. And a 2-1 from Allen, he makes the four point, it was a nice roll. So he's got Forrest to come out and Forrest to hit outside, which is duplication, double twos, hits but does not escape. He's hit with two checkers. He's thinking about the last two. So Victor could slot his bar point, but he elects not to. He just makes his nine points, not a valuable point in itself, just a safe safe place for, for checkers to be. 6-2, a good roll from, from Allen. He, he comes in and out, in on the two and out with six. And Victor wishes to hit. He does not hit. He may not hit unless he goes four to two, which of course he won't do. He's thinking about whether to make a five prime 
make the seven point hope to keep Allen blocked keep the back checker of Allen's from moving or he could play more safely seven to five clearly this is the best play to win but he might lose a few additional gammons due to being hit so a double three is not a hitter that's what Allen Tish has rolled and he just brings his Outside checker in, 17 point to the five point. Victor is hoping for a four right now. He rolls a two one, he simply safeties his outside blot nine to six. Five up. I see that Allen has rolled five and something. This time I see the white one, but not the black one. He's thinking. Oh. A 5 2 oh, that was blocked. He couldn't play 6 to 1, so he had to break something. So he elected to break his 9 point. That was an anti joker for Allen. There's the 4. Victor did not double because he had duplicate 4s and 4 checkers back but he did roll a four to hit. Six two is a joker for Allen. In and out, Victor does not think too long about a double. That is a very nice roll. He rolls a four, he comes out and makes his 18 point and he hits Allen off the edge of his five prime, five to two. And if past experience is any guide, Alan won't have any trouble, we'll just keep hitting him with twos. And he did, he rolled two one. Then he hit with a two and he slid 17 to 16 with a one. He kept his builders in position on a six, five, and four. Three two is no, is not so good for Victor. I guess it's okay, he comes in. Can't be too bad to come in. And he's got to break his 18 point but it's not necessarily a disaster. It was a six, a six up. I see a six up and a one. Oh, a one. Okay. That's good. So I don't think there's any real question that Alan is going to make the 16 point for that one. He could hit and leave what is it, 10? 10 return shots? 3, 4, 3, 5, 1, 4, 1, 5, 1, 6. 10 return shots. So he doesn't want to leave 10 return shots. He does want to escape the 5 prime. And he does want to save his outside blot. So he goes, he, he does all those things, makes a 16 point. There is a double 2, and there is a 14 point. Victor has made. He breaks his 5 prime. Now he's got direct pressure on that outer point of Allen's. 3-1, nothing breaks yet. He probably can, he could play 5-1, to one, or he can play 4-1, to 2-1. to one. The advantage of making the 1 point is that the 2 point would be open in direct range of the 8 point, but he elects to keep the the better quality inner board point to two point go five to one. Victor has rolled a four and one, it looks like. He's thinking about the one. He's looking at seven to six with a one, and he's he's thinking about coming out. Well, the coming out is good. Hoping that Ellen will not hit and cover. Alan has rolled six. Six. <laughs> looks like a joker to me, and it looks like he should play. Keep going to the four point is my guess. Just to have more ways to clear the outside point. He would have four safe points to land on. He, he could... He could 
break the two point, getting the, the or break the eight point to the two point, and get the eight point triggers out of out of range of uh, direct range of the of Victor's anchor. But now, uh, looks like double deuces from from Alan, which enables him to clear clear his eight point. And he makes the aggressive play of taking two checkers off. He could have gone six to four and taken one checker off. So no, no double six blot number. But the the, the, the gammon is a little bit close. And a six three by Victor, he simply goes to the nine, 11 points. It's not giving up on the idea of making an outside point if, if, uh, Alan leaves him a shot immediately. He could have crossed efficiently to the six point for gammon saving. Now Alan bears off, he rolls a five one. He doesn't think of diversifying to the five point. He just wants to rip checkers off. And a four four for Victor. So he could play hellbent to save the gammon. And he moves one checker all the way from his 22 to the six point. So sort of a hybrid strategy. He's, he wants to uh, save the gammon, but still keep builders in place for making new points in case he hits a shot. Now, Allen played, played safe with a 6-1. Now the gammon is not so such a great prospect. Looks like he rolled a 5-3, bears a checker off. Victor brings two checkers in. Only 6-3 is a blot number now. That's a 5-1. He should simply clear his six point is the safest play, which he does. Gammon is a bit of a long shot now for, for Allen. And Victor's not putting any stock in his chances to win. He, Wants to make sure he saves the gammon. And Alan is simply bearing off. But now Victor with a double five. He's trying to make it interesting. But double twos by Alan, six two by Victor. And Alan simply continues to bear off slowly but surely. And Victor is almost ready to concede, but not quite. As Alan rolls a small 3-1, and Victor rolls a small 3-2, it looked like, and he now he does concede the game. So we're even in this 13-point match, even at three apiece, 10 away to 10 away. In the Masters Finals, the Concordia jackpot at the big Montreal tournament, the second edition. I think they call it the, the Omnium Montreal Open or something like that. And you can you notice that they're playing on a Gammon Guys board. You see the logo there, and Gammon Guys is a corporate sponsor. I think it's in the final negotiating stages of there being a corporate sponsor for the USBGF and this is the USBGF stream on Twitch TV the players may be ready to take a break usually if they if they do take a break they'll put a little sign on the board saying break but uh, I don't think they're going to their blood is, is hot. Their blood is up. 3-3 three, three and a 13-pointer. Allen opens with 6-3, splits with a 6 out to the 18 and a builder down to the 10. 5-1 for Victor, the standard place to hit once. Many years ago, decades ago, people would hit twice, but that's now seen as, you know, it's a little, little bit anti-positional to put a blot on the one point. 5-3 by 
by Allen. He missed the return shot, in with a five, and made a new point to ten. It's usually a good idea. 4-2 by Victor. So he's thinking whether to make his bar point safely or whether to make the four point not quite as safely, but have an airboard point, and then the sack the six point. He elected to make his bar. 5-1 by Allen just simply makes the makes the five point. Then you sort of see why, you know, make the four point would have been reasonable if not correct. I don't know if it's correct or not, but not every play, you know, there were a lot of duplications, hitting numbers, a lot were duplicate. Like a 5 1 was one of them. So to hit, Al would have had to forego the, the five point. So a double hit, double hit by Victor, a 4 1. Um, and Allen misses the, the return shot. He doesn't roll an ace. Comes in with a 3 2, and now 6 5 for Victor. So he runs away. And a 5-4 for, for Allen. He cannot move a back checker. <clears throat> so he can he can hit loose with a 5 and then come down with a 4 for Builder. Or he need not hit loose. He can come down with a 4 and 10, 10 to 5 and, and give give Victor the full roll. But he he chooses not, not to give Victor the full roll. He chooses to gain a tempo by hitting loose. Victor hits back with a 6-4. Good roll for Victor. And now Allen can hit, he can hit back in turn with a 4-3. Now he's lost his midpoint. He's got seven blots scattered around, but he's got a better inner board than Victor, and Victor's got a blot on his own one point. So no thought of doubling. 4-1 by Victor. Very interesting. I think he should now he could. He could hit twice, but he's going to elect correctly, I believe, to hit once in the outfield. Note that if Allen hits him loose on his four-point return, he's going to have some return shots back. And he has rolled a three-two, and he does elect. He does elect to hit loose. He doesn't want Victor to escape, to start making outfield points. He doesn't mind necessarily being hit back he can make more anchors or he can hit back on Victor's one point. Victor has rolled a 3-6. He hit one of the outfield checkers and a 6 oh, a 3-6 from Allen is not the greatest roll. He's got a choice of contesting the outfield a little more with 22-16 to 16, where he can simply that's that's the play to mix it up and keep timing. He could, he could have simply made his four point, and then hope hope for good things later. But he wants to he wants to mix things up, and also get that spare checker out of the board for timing. The trouble is he leaves a bunch of return shots, but I mean not return shots. He leaves a bunch of shots, and a four three for Victor is excellent. Now he, he hits and makes his nine point. <laughs> So now Allen's five checkers back ha have some trouble getting getting out and around that prime. So that's a 4-2 for Allen. He enters with a four to make the 21 anchor, and he comes in eight to six to build for the four point. He's not that concerned about getting hit outside. And Victor is wondering whether his timing justifies a double. He does not double. He rolls a six. What was that? It was a five to two. 16 to 14, 13, eight. And now a three, three. A three, three from Allen. He moves the spare checker up to where it can see daylight. Makes his four point. He slots his three point. It's important to use his forward checkers efficiently. He wants to make points in order. So the three point is next on his make list. And a six five by Victor. He's probably going to reinforce the nine point. Yes, he is. Now he's got builders on his four outside points. So he can make his five point next turn if 
if uh, Alan does not slide up and make that point himself, which he, depending on the role, he may want to do. The trouble is that his timing is suspect. I see one number is a two that he's rolled, and I don't see the other one very well because of that infernal white die. A 6-2 or a double two? Maybe it was a double two. And Alan made his one point and slotted his two. And double and pass by Victor. Quite reasonable because the timing was highly suspect. So Alan prudently gives up one point rather than a possible four or more likely perhaps two. And Victor is now ahead 4-3 to 13. Victor opens with 6-1, making his bar. 5-3, making a three. This is a standard reply. You made a point, I'll make a point in return. 4-3 by Victor. He is going to split somewhere, I believe. Yeah, he splits to his own 21, like Allen's four. I believe this is standard two. Now a two one for Allen. He hits loose. He doesn't want to give uh, Victor time to play the full role. He leaves the checker. The, he leaves the four point slotted, which is a good idea unless Victor rolls something like double two where he hits on Allen's four point. And with the other two twos, he's going to make his own four point. Joker by Victor. Alan needing something very good now. It looks it's a five four. And it looks like it's prudent to me just to make the twenty anchor. The back checkers may be in trouble if not. And there's a lot of work to do after hitting. So Alan makes the twenty anchor. Now he's got a solid asset. He's in the game for a very long time now. He'd hit, he would have had to scramble to consolidate. That's if he did not immediately get hit back with eight, eight numbers. Five, two for Victor. He's played a two, nine to seven to lift his block from the zone outfield. He's thinking about the five, he can put a builder on to his eight point, or he could come out to the 16 point. I suppose he's not afraid as much of getting hit inside Allen's board, because if so, generally the loose hit will have return shots versus being hit outside, where he would have many fewer return shots. So he's, it's like he's even. Victor, Victor's got 18 rolls to hit, and it looks like he is fanned on the two-point board. And a 4-3 by, by Allen, he's point, one point about hitting loose in your board is if you get missed, you can make a good point. If you hit loose on a high point, as, as Allen did. Now, Victor fanned on the three-point board. So it didn't look like, it didn't look like uh, Allen Tish had much of anything, but Suddenly, he's got his four point and his ten point and his eight point is slotted and his back checker is mobilized. Victor enters with a two one. He can just make the 23 anchor. He does so, putting pressure on, direct pressure on Allen's blot on his own eight. Allen rolls four three, so he cannot cover. That was not a good roll. He cannot cover the eight point. He decides, looks like he's going to lift the eight point blot. He does not want to be hit. A hit for Victor would allow him to mobilize a back man and run at the same time while, you know, put, putting, 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 uh, putting out on the bar would be great, but Victor. Says, ah, who cares? I will the double five. I'll, you know, no. 
that's tough. A six five for Allen. He goes down to seven and slots his five. Looks like this picture up fourteen pips there. He's he's thinking about it. Uh, he does not. He does not double. He simply comes in. He rolls a nine, and he goes thirteen to four. And that looks like a seven. And roll totaling seven, thirteen to six by by Allen. Must have been a four three or a six one. He's going to count the checkers again. One hundred and fourteen pips for Victor. 124 for Allen. It was a 5 3 by Victor. So we have 18, and now this is a 2 2 something. Two two maybe. So now Victor has rolled double. Double something. Double sixes, it looks like. And then Alan can only reply with eight pips, and he's too far down in the race to accept the double. It, there's a... Uh, depending on what the exact pip count was, there was a chance that Victor would have been too good to double. Um, such situations arise if you're way ahead in the race such that no sequence can, no or very few sequences can, can allow your opponent to take a cube next turn. And that might have been the case with that pip count. But if Victor didn't think so, I'm sure he knew what the pip count was. And he, you know, he's a great player. He, he knows nuances like this and so um, three two split for victors and double ones by uh, Allen pointing on the four point three two by Victor making the twenty two anchor and a six two slotting the five point by Allen. So it's Victor's now had five to three. He rolls four three. Now he brings builders to his nine and ten points. You know, he's, he's a smorgasbord of blots, but hey, you know, um, if he hits, he's got to leave a direct return shot. So he rolled a 6-3, did Alan Tish, and he elected not to hit outside. He he made his five-point slot at his bar. Victor ro rolled a bad number, double fives. He had to, had to make his... Three point from all the way from his thirteen, and Allen is now thinking about doubling. This would be a a good pressure double because he's got uh, eights except double twos. He's got all nines, and he's got uh, six four. So ten ten hitting numbers it looked like. Not to mention double sixes is very strong. He. Allen did not double, and he rolled a 2-1 with which he switched from his 8-point to a 7-point. I'm not sure that was right. He, he gets a solid 4-prime, and uh, Victor makes his, makes his bar point with a 3-2. And Allen reinforces his... Uh, Seven point with a five one six five for Victor. Victor, of course, would have preferred to make a point on his side of the board, but considering running to the eleven point, he does now. Allen will attack if he can. Victor's got a straggler on, on Allen's board. 
kind of looked like a, th a three two so he hit loose with a three and went seven to five for another builder and victor rolls a five three hitting and coming out Alan is still in the game. Victor has not made a prime yet. Especially with with double fives, a joker return shot. Alan comes in, makes his eight point and out to the 15 point. And Victor rolls a 3-1. Nice shot. He comes to the edge of the prime and he hits outside. And Alan says, ah, I don't care. You've got lots. I've got a five prime. I've got return shots. I'm behind by two points in the match. I'm going to double to two and see what you want to do with that, that cube. Of course, the, 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 the Woolsey doubling rule or Woolsey's law says that, you know, if you're not sure your opponent has a take, then you should double because your opponent might make the wrong decision. Victor took fairly quickly. And Alan rolled, you know, he rolled, he had five return shots outside and he rolled six five, which is very nice. That puts puts Alan in very good shape this game. Five two from victory comes in with a two. Eleven to six, safety in his blood, and now looked like a double deuce from Alan Tishy. Made the three pointer and hit loose on his two. That was a very nice roll. Victor rolls a, looks like a 3-1. He enters one checker. He's got one on the bar. And Alan is hoping to just cover his two-point or maybe attack. It's a six. Again, I can't see the other die. It, might, it looks like a three. So he's covering with a six, and he's thinking about his three. If it is a three, yes, it's a three. He just thumbs up with a back checker. Says I'll attack if I can, but I know I have to get those check back checkers out. And Victor fans, and what do we have from Alan? Looked like a seven. He roll. He, he hit from the eight point to the one point. And Victor again. Victor fanned, and now Alan is. Closing his board with a 6-4, it looks like. Yep. 7-1, 24-20. To to my stream is a little bit lagging here. My, my stream is broken. And I've got, I've got lag. Uh, Alan has closed his board, escaped back checkers. He's coming around. Got his outside checkers two and his fifteen, one and his fourteen. It looks like he's rolled double fives. He's played fifteen, ten, fourteen, nine. And he's thinking of his last two, which should be, I believe, ten, five, nine, four. But okay, so he played fifteen to five and fourteen to nine. That was his full roll. Victor's closed out. Double sixes was a blot number for Allen. He's got a 3-1. He plays 14-11. No, no blot numbers this time. Looks like a double... What was that? Four. A 4-4. Four, four. I think he's played 10-6... Nine to five. Got two fours left. No, I'm. I'm. It's like a four two he had, and he played ten to six, and I don't know. He's, he's got spares on the six five and three. Six three, six off, five to two. Very safe position for Allen. It's like a four two with which he clears a six point. Double four fives or sixes leaves a blot for him next turn, but Victor's board is not ready to do him much damage. Victor fans two. Uh, something he cleared. 
maybe a six one. He cleared his five point, picked her in with a five. A very safe position for Allen. He probably will win a four point gallon the way things are looking out. Looks like yeah, a two a two one, so he's thinking whether we should stay even on the end with both points. He plays three to two. That might be correct. We'll bear off a little more slowly this way than if he played uh, two to one. Victor rolls five two. He comes in with a five. He crosses, crosses to the six point. Two off the four point for Allen. Double four is very good for Victor. Probably just going to bring two checkers to the 12 point. He does. Makes that gammon, gammon save a bit more competitive. Four or three or something similar off the four and off three. Two checkers off for Allen. One. One, one. So three crossovers for Victor. Two from seven to six, one from eight to six. Two checkers off for Allen. Victor rolls a six and six and what? Six and two or six and one. Two checkers of the six. Bearing two off. Now four ace. What is it? Maybe four three. He comes comes in now. He, he he's still he's still got a. Uh, Four one, he's off. A, a double four does not save for Victor. A uh, everything else I think does. And that was a four, a four X. So that was a four something that 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 bore off. So Victor got off the gammon. Combination of precise technical baron play and. Good rolls enable him to save the gammon. So instead of being down seven to five, it's even eight away, eight away in this 13 point final of what's effectively the Masters at Montreal. And 5 1 split for Victor, minor split, 5 2 minor split for Alan Tish. The builder to the 11 point would be less effective against those split back checkers. And 4-3 for, for Victor making the 20 anchor. And that is a 1. A 4-1 for, for Allen. 8-4 to four and 22-21. He slots two good points. And a 3-1 for Victor. He makes his 5 point. And that looks like a double one for Allen. Now he, he anchors on the 21 point. He's just going to. Well, he could have played safe with a with a with a one, instead of giving Victor a direct shot. It's, there seems to be not quite enough to gain. And Victor rolls a two, and he ha he hits immediately. I think it would have been better for Allen to have just play four to three safely, but he. Played more aggressively. Four three back. Four four three from from Allen. He comes out to the eighteen point. I think that was a four three. He, he didn't have to come to the eighteen point. If that were a four, four three, he could have he could have played to the uh, three point to slot an extra point. Instead, Victor has hit him with a. I'm not sure what that was. But he hit. Whose clock is updating? Okay, he hit with a. Looks like he hit with a. A four two or a five one, probably a five one. He didn't seem to think too long. Four two would have had to think a little bit about whether he could anchor on the sixteen point or something. And now a three one for Al. Alan is considering whether he should. Enter on the 24 point and hit back with a three. Hit on the 18 point. Uh, 
Um, so he's thinking about that. He's electing not to. He's now he's going six to three. He's afraid of mayhem if he leaves multiple blots, four blots against a stronger inner board. He's a bit damned if he does and damned if he doesn't because, you know, Victor's a favorite to make the make his bar point for a four prime against three back checkers. And he gets out of Allen's board with a six. He leaves two outfield blots, so he's not too worried about that. Makes the bar point with an ace. Six, five. So now the case for hitting is a bit stronger now because Victor is that much closer to just rolling home. So Alan doesn't want to let him just escape back checkers with impunity. He hits loose with a six and he covers his three point. He's got 22 return shots on Alan's side of the board, but says, you're Victor Ashkenazi, the great Victor Ashkenazi. I'm not just going to give you a free point. If you hit me, I may make a double anchor and play from there. Victor does not hit. He safeties his outside checker, entering with a 5 and 14-13 safe. And that is a 2-1. Is that a 2-1? Or is that a 2-2? Two, two? It's a double 2. Apologies. Double 2 by Allen. So he hits. He hits loose on the 5 point. He covers his 4 point. And that's two of the twos. He's thinking about the other four. So he, my guess is that he will leave that five point slotted. But if he leaves it slotted, how should he proceed? Should he? Looks like thirteen eleven is a nice deuce. And for the, the other deuce, he could simply play 24-22. He elects to play, is that what he's done? Yep, he has played 8-6. to six. So that gets off a 2-6 return shot, keeps the back trailer on the 24 point where it controls maximum territory. And that was a 2 Two one from Victor in with a two and eight to seven, and a maybe a five one from uh, five one or four two from Allen to make us five point, and now a six five from Victor. He's considering coming out with a six. He was considering coming out with a six and down with a five. He could play out with a five and down with a six, I presume. Although that leaves two more shots. And the third play is to uh, make the ace point. Bribing the trailer and trailing checker forward. But Victor says I there's only only one way one, only one way to escape is to roll a six or a five. I've rolled a six or a five. I'll minimize shots shots will come out of the board. Oh double ace. So he he's thinking about his last one. He made the twelve point unless you roll box cars, you're in a big disadvantage. Box cars hits of course. That's a snowflake and a uh, a blaster instead of two boxcars. Alan makes this ace point, and uh, Alan already has the cube, so Victor doesn't have to worry about about doubling. He rolls a 6-3 and plays safe. 16 to 7, there's no other blotless play. 2-1 by Alan. Alan could simply go move his back checker up with the 21 and get out. Uh, 
And it might have, might not have been a bad play because the race isn't too horrible and against Allen. Six three. Can it be? Can it be true? By Jove, a block number. Victor has no choice, no real choice, but to keep his five prime, leave only one block. Double aces, he had any five plus two six, but he has rolled double one, which is not so great. If he comes up, he has pick count after moving is 109. He's only looks like he's only ten pips behind, right? Yeah, ninety nine to one hundred and nine. So he's ten ten pips behind. So he's he, he counts the race and he says, "All right, I'm I'm going to take a chance on ten pips behind." He could he could have stayed back and hoped for a blot number from Victor. There were considerable a few at least a few blot numbers now. Three five, uh, Victor plays safe. Alan is unable to exit his Victor's board, which which hurts a bit. It looked like a four three six two six three, a two one for Victor. You know he you know he he need not make struggle to make points because double fours. Um, this is the problem that, that Alan has, of course. He's got to uh, mobilize those back checkers sooner rather than later. Because his, you know, he's wasting pips within his inner board. He's got to he's got to get those crossovers start bearing off. And he does exit after having broken his five and six points. He was able to roll five four and come around the corner. He's a substantial underdog here. His picture's bearing in very quickly. Double threes, he's simply going to, he's thinking about whether to pay off to a double six and make his three point, which he does. And there's a double six by Allen, which is a very nice roll. He plays three of them, plays the six point and to the nine point. <clears throat> now he's got to think whether he should come out and just play a pure race or go nine to three, and I believe he's correct to race. He plays 21 15, 33 43, 33 43, 44, 68 pips for Victor, and Victor rolls at 3 2. Is that a 3 2? Yep, 3 2, two checkers in, 7 to 4, 7 to 5. Allen rolls a 2, a 2 something or other, 4 3 maybe, or 4. I don't know, 2-2 two, two he rolled, I guess. Victor Bears will couple off. 6-5, is that what that is? Off, yep. And, you know, Victor Bears off two at a time, and Alan's got a prayer here. Victor's got a lot more checkers off. Now he's got, rolls a very nice 6-5. And a six something, a six six. Looks like boxcars for Alan Tish. Making things interesting. That is a five four, two checkers off. So eight checkers versus five, not a double. Double fours, four checkers off. And if Victor does not get at least three checkers off, <laughs> which he does not with a five four, here comes the cube back. And um, sort of an unlikely way for Allen to win is by rolling a bunch of big doubles at the end, but he did so. And now Allen leads in this match, the 13-point match, 7-5, to five, 6 away to 8 away. So there's still a lot of match left here. But it's very exciting, the lead seesaws and... Uh, Alan Tish is, is uh, 
Six away to Victor's eight away. And the opening roll finally comes down and Allen splits with a five of two. That's the favored play by the bots. They initially favored it slightly, but in the later spots these days, favored by a bit more. Five four by Victor. He splits. If you're way behind in the match, you can you can hit loose and split, but or hit loose and come hit loose and come down with a four, but that doesn't that's not warranted here. Victor's behind by two. Allen rolls a pretty good 6-4. He makes his 18 anchor. Double fives for Victor. And Victor is going to bring a bat checker home with that double five. He's going to race when he's ahead. And he's going to start his three-point instead of playing 13 to 8. The theory is to build the board quickly. And Alan says, all right, you've got two blocks in your board. I'm going to slot my five point with a four one. And a one and a two for Victor. He quickly makes his five point and comes up to the 22. So I'm not just going to let you build your board there, mister. I'm going to make put some hindrance in your way, even though it'd be with one checker. And... If you want to leave a blot, I might hit you. If you want to hit me loose, I might hit you. When you're preoccupied with making the five point, I will, that's when I will make it more costly for you to do so. So 2-1 was, 2-1 is Alan's roll. He makes the five with an ace. Nine to seven, there is a direct shot now. And it is a very nice, nice hitting number that Victor's rolled four to hit and three to cover. So Victor's clever strategy of stepping up with a deuce has paid, paid off, born fruit. Allen rolls a one, three, comes in with a one, an eight to five with a three. And Victor is now. He's now, he's rolled a three, two to safety his 18 point check. And it looks like a double four for Allen. He makes the four point. Makes the four point three times and down to the nine. Victor's, Victor's ahead. He's ahead, um, what, I think 23 pips after this roll with, with Alan on roll. And a 3-1, Alan proves his board still further, but Victor's got a lot of work. He's got to come home past that bar point and the, the trailer on the 24 point. So Victor looked like a 2-1, 8 to 5, a safe play, the only safe play. And a 5-3 by, by Alan Tish. So Alan, he, 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 can, he can simply break his midpoint. The drawback is now, now uh, the 6-1 blot number is no longer a blot number. He can play safely to the 6-point. But that might be a small price to pay for getting more flexibility to build his board. And a 6-4. I'll still leave the trailer back there, hoping that Victor rolls something awkward. He'll slot his 2-point with a 6, bring a builder in to the 6-point with a 4. A 4-1 for Victor, a nice roll. It's cocked, I guess. A cocked 4-1 is not so nice. He rolls a double threes. <laughs> double three is nice. No matter how you play it, it's a good roll. He can so so Victor can simply make the three point three times, eight to two and five to two twice. Or he could play thirteen to ten three times and eight to five. That looks a little more awkward. But he is thinking about it at least. 
you're probably counting the lot numbers. There are a considerable number of those. So he does not, he has, he, he's, he's probably going to elect to make his two point, which is safer in the short run. Question is, is it safer in the long run? It seems to be safer in the long run too, but Victor does not believe that. And he plays, he clears his midpoint. I, the stack on the five and the stripped eight point is, looks a little scary to me. So that is a six, three. And nine to three and cover the two points. So we have six, six leaves the block. Six, five leaves the block. Six, four leaves the block. Six, three leaves the block. Six, two leaves the block. Six, one does not. So nine sixes. Five, four block. Five, three block. Five, one block. Five, one is what Victor rolled. There's a lot of block numbers and he's left a, left a direct shot and gotten hit. While well, Alan Tish has got a five point board, he hits with a three, keeps the 18 point and goes six to four. There was some argument for breaking the breaking the uh, 18 point, but I guess he didn't want to pay off to Joker, double one, to have two checkers instead of one. And fan and now double by Alan and Victor cannot find a reason to take being on the bar against a beautiful five point board and some little bit of gamut danger as well. So it, it looked to me as if Victor's double three play might have been uh, incorrect with that because you know, he, he did have a lot of blot numbers and he, of course, at high inside, he rolled a blot number and he got hit, and that was the end. Of course, he would have still had to. Have cleared the midpoint if he'd made the, the two point. So now uh, Alan Tish had eight to five, five away to eight away. Victor opens with a four two. Alan replies with a four two. And they
Oh, hello, world. Marty Storer is back. Um, we had some technical glitches here. In the meantime, Victor is now uh, it's 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 Victor is down eight in Crawford, which is a nice gammon go score. If he gets to seven, he he saved a game versus getting to six. So he is a backgammon does not an undoubled backgammon does not mean very much compared to an undoubled gammon, but he's uh, trying to win that gammon. Okay, a six, six one now. Yeah, he he did, he did want to play eight to seven because then then many sixes would be blot numbers. Now he's got he's got no blot numbers, but he's moved a spare off of his four point, and that's a double three. Is that a double three? A six three, excuse me. So in with a six and off with a three. He keeps a spare on the five point so he doesn't run into five, four, six, five double blot numbers. And also, you know, he wants to get some some checkers off. Now six five is a single blot number. Would have been he would have left blots on both his six and his five points. He not had that spare on the five. Three one miss. Allen is in with a one, but Remains on the bar. Four, three, safe, six to two, and three off. Now he's got six double blot numbers, five, four, six, four, four, three. Allen stays on the bar, which is a boon if he actually gets to shoot for one of those. Six, one, he, Victor is happy to clear that five point safely. And now, unfortunately for Allen, he has to break his four point prime by entering with a two, one, eight to six. At least keeps three in a row. Now two one is the only safe play is what Victor's about to play, two off and four to three. Allen does not unduly mind being backhammoned, but he wants to get checkers into the outfield. Losing three points is really not very much worse than losing two. This is Crawford game, the cube is not active. Of course, Allen might win by hitting, but he does not. He simply moves into the outfield under the 17 point. And there's a one, what? What just happened? Double one, apparently, because he didn't bear check her off. And that is a 5-3. So I believe Allen wants to move his third checker off of the 24 point so that if Victor comes down to three on the two point, as Allen hopes he does, and he does with a five two. Now, Allen, any anything sub double ones breaks the twenty four point. So, Allen is going to. I think he should not care about a back Allen very much. I think he should make his eight point. But he is going to go to try to save that back Allen. I would have made that eight point myself for a four point prime. And Victor bears off two. And Allen is hoping desperately for one, and he rolls a one. Now he may, may win the game, of course, but if he wins the game, he wins the match. But he's saving the gammon is big. So he spread his builders. He wishes to make the eight point. And Victor has rolled a cock something or other, but now he falls over the 6-2, hitting on that 8-point. Any 6 or 4 hits back, along with double 2, double 3, double 5. 23 numbers hit back, and that is not one of them. A 5-1. Yikes. So he makes the 12 point for some little bit of blockage. And Victor hopes for a nice double hitting joker. That looks like a three one he rolled. Triple shot plus extras for Allen. That is a two. What is that? Cannot read that. Oh, is that a four two? Yeah, four two. So that is one of the very few missing numbers. I guess, I guess, I guess maybe he had seven missing numbers, right?
double six, double four, double three, six missing numbers. All right. Yeah. Double six, double four, double three from Siberia to hit that thing that he will only roll. Four two, one of those six missing numbers. And he's going to make the 14 point for blockage and slither up to the 20 point. Then double one, no move. 26 hitting numbers, I believe. Five two is one of them. And he hits 18 to 11, five three and out. Six, four, and three doesn't leave much room for missing. Double five hits from Siberia. It looks like everything hits. <clears throat> four, two. He hits with a four, thinks about the two. He could play 14 to 12 to get off the double hitting double four. But he plays 20 to 18. Six, four. I think maybe he gained an extra number or two to hit. Five, four hits. <clears throat> How shall he play a five? Looks like he probably just wants to play 18 to 13. Well, the idea of making his eight point and or his nine or 10. <laughs> quickly as possible. He could make the one point. But that doesn't seem too promising. He wants, he, you know, he, and he, he does play 18-13. Double four would put a damper on on things. And four one, he may not have with a, with a four one. He doesn't want to anyway. The only legal move is kind of a higher number. Six four makes the four point. Alan just, he, oh, no, I, don't, I don't know what he's thinking about. Maybe he doesn't see that he can make the four point. Maybe he's blinded with the desire to make his eight point. Now he's, okay, he's making the eight point and hitting loose on the four. So at least he's got a fifth point of his five point slotted. I'm not sure I wouldn't have just made that four point, but. You know, and Alan must have seen it and elected not to do it. So now it's, it's paid off. He's made his five prime. He slots the back of the prime, gives himself a double six to cover and a double three. Two six joker. Any e five, any e four, double two, double six. There's the five. The joker for Victor would now be 6-3, 4-2, not a joker. Seventeen covers, I believe. He could make that. He's making it 28 covers. And Victor, no move for Victor. Is that a 2 1? Should he maximize covers? The 20, 27 that I can perceive. There's one. There's a 6 2. And he. Now Alan has almost certainly saved the gammon. Just remains to roll this prime home quickly. And that was a what? So he did played illegally six three he played played six three. Brought, brought one into the five point and to the fifteen. Not sure if that's optimal. He generally wants to give himself the most ways to attack on his three point. The Checker on the five point seems a little bit deep. What is that? A oh, a four two. So he's 
putting a builder deep onto his four point. So there's only, you know, you, it's working out because he can play four to three, which is nice. And Victor's rolled a one X, not hitting. And Alan, of course, hopes to cover. So he should try to make sure double fours and fives don't play badly for him now. He has no fear of that. Double sixes would be nice, too. Okay, so he's just playing quickly here. I'm not sure that was, was right. Mm -hmm. So he, he might have played nine to eight, but double sixes is a good bow. Now we can advance his prime. You know, these, these these random random little plays with the spares don't matter a heck of a lot, but they matter a little bit. <clears throat> that is a three two by Allen. He wants to roll his prime home quickly, so he will, okay, he's giving himself 17 ways to hit loose or better. And he's got a few more ways. He's got, you know, the three, two, definitely got one. He wants to close that board, save that gammon. Double fives plays okay. Double fours plays okay. That was a three five, I think. Fan, he's got 28 covers. Three two, he just covers. One one thing, one thing he could have tried was not, not covering and then hoping to maintain a spare on the six point. 3-2, he likes to bring a spare to the 5. That's kind of where one of them belongs, so it can't be too bad. 4-2, he's got a double 6 blot number, but he's more concerned about winning the game. And he was able to put a spare in a 6. 12-6. to six. And 3-2, he should probably just move to the 2 point. He does. I would say he has a bit less than 8% to win this game. You probably should just go 5 to 4. It's a little bit misguided, I think, to do this, because he's, he's really hoping he can remake the point at best. And uh, the extra checker doesn't really, isn't really the best thing. So, so 5-3, um, you can Bear checker off with four to one, or he can simply break the six point. Wait, two off is two off is um, I think over optimistic fan. I'm not the consummate expert on playing positions like this. But so the risk is certainly that you you don't you're not able to fill in those extra points. If he'd broken his six point, he would have hoped to maintain a five point board for for a while. He's bearing more checkers off, and Victor's been fanning. Alan was very happy to have saved the gammon double five fan. Fallon can pull out an extremely lucky win. He will win this match. He cannot maintain a four point board. He could have maintained a three point board, but he's. Bearing off coming down to even, now Victor's in with a 6-2, which should be about over unless, unless big doubles can show up very soon, or Victor can manage to roll very, very small. 4-6, it's almost over. 4-1, he's got a chance. Less than 7, followed by double fives or sixes. 5-4, and Victor wins a point post Crawford one away to seven away. Alan Tish in the lead against Victor Ashkenazi. So 
there's no reason to slot that five point at this score. Uh, your gammons do not help you as white and notice I say white instead of yellow because white and black is just so much simpler, more like chess. And Victor says, well, I'm going to mix things up. I'm just going to come up to the 18 point. Maybe. Now on we go astray in complication. So he hits twice. This, this is a reasonably good, reasonable at least. He made the play rather quickly. He could have, he could have hit once and not put a checker so deep on the, on the one point. But he elected to uh, hit twice and he's He's gained time to make his bar point. Unfortunately, Victor is now for Alan. Victor is all joker double two. In with the two, making the four point and coming down to the 11. The cube is still in the middle. Now, Victor, if Victor, and now 5-3, well, that's, that's a good cube saving move. Um, Victor is, is hoping I believe that he has not forgotten to double. I cannot credit the fact that he's forgotten to double. He's he's probably hoping that um, he will reach a position that is scary for Allen, and um, where where Allen will will erroneously pass a cube and give uh, sort of hand Victor a free game. The only time where he would, uh, where Allen would wish to pass a cube was, was if, if Victor had very high gamma chances. But he doesn't yet. And Allen has rolled a nice double four. And he is electing to make the nine point and reinforce that 20 anchor. Certainly looks very good play. And Victor has rolled a 3-2 and he's made a blocking 11 point. Fives and fours move for a play of a spare back checker, but Allen rolls, he's got other rolls besides five and four. He went roll three two making his five point. He's happy to have that five prime. Victor maintains his broken four prime, 13, eight. And a six, five, looks like, yes, six, five. Very good roll for Allen to come around the corner. There's no urgency to turn that cube on Victor's part. Because Without gammon chances in play, Allen will take virtually anything next turn. 5-1. Now, what is what is the idea? The idea is to keep two spares on top of that 5 prime. Could have played 9-3, to three, but now he's got more ways to play without breaking the 5 prime. Alan Tish. 3-1. Now, Victor says, all right. We'll make things scary by making a three-point board. Now, if you decide to run, which that roll does not allow him to do, 6-3, he dumps behind uh, with, with his play last turn. Allen was able to keep that five-point. 3-1 for Victor. It's a good roll. Double six is good and better, but 3-1. That is a five and a... And a what? A five and a four. Is that what I'm seeing? <clears throat> if five four, he's going to come out with two. Now Victor is thinking, how can I ever lose my market for this cube? Double ones, double twos. I think he does better two double sixes, maybe. Victor is thinking about chances to lose his market. He guess he decides he can lose his market and he he doubles. And uh, Alan, is, the, Alan takes that cube and Victor cannot hit. 
Instead, he keeps the 11 point, hoping that, uh, hoping for something bad like a 6 1 where the block gets left. So Alan can safety. All right, so he makes his two point with an ace. Safety's one of the blots. He might have made his one point for ease of covering the other blot. But he did not elect to do so. Whether he left the blot on the uh, 16 or the 15 point, it's the same number of ways, ways 13, blot, 13 ways to hit. He rolled a 2 1 victor hit, and now a, a 6 1. So do I do I come out to the 18 point, or do I do it right into the teeth of a triple shot? He says, Yes, I do. I have to get out sometime. I don't want to bury checkers behind that prime quite yet. And there's a deuce, and Victor is going to slot that open five point almost certainly. Well, I say that I say almost certainly, but I'm not. Now that Victor's hesitating, I'm not sure. He doesn't. Victor does not want to be hit, and ten to five would leave fifteen ways to be hit. But he does want to win. And making the five point would increase his winning chances by a lot. That is a one. There's a cocked a cocked roll. And another cocked roll. And a one three is forced. In with a one, in with a three. Victor is happy he made his the play he did last turn. A four one, he's gotta make the one point on. It's a five point board. Conceivable, ooh, a 5-3. 5-3, I was going to say it's conceivable. Victor could win an undeserved, I won't say undeserved, a very, very lucky gamut. Now, after the hit of the 8-1 to shot from the bar, Victor is replied with a double ace. And of course he's thinking about whether to switch from a six to a five point, but he, he believes the uh, six point is more valuable. Spare on the six point is good. No outside shots. Six, four, he must play a six out. And the four, it's a question of burying a checker to the two point versus leaving extra shots in the outfield. The good part about leaving extra shots in the outfield is besides you don't bury the checker is you put a little bit of pressure on that 17 point. So suppose white rolls six, one, six, two, not so great. He rolls a three. Oh. It's a little bit scary. So he, he he saves shots and he plays. He just plays sixty-two, hoping to hoping to win in some boring fashion. Two one. All right, get off the edge of my prime, and I will move my blot off the edge of the prime in case you hit me. You won't be at the edge of my prime unless you roll 3-1 or something like that. There's a 3 hitting, and there's a 1. Did I call it or what? And hit up to edge. And Victor is hoping to exit in short order while, while poor, uh, poor Alan just stays on the bar. But there's, there's, one, there's one way to do that. He's got to come up to the edge. He 
Safety is the other bot. And now Alan is in and out with a 5 4. Double sixes would be nice for Victor. Come on, baby. It's half right. Shall he leave 20 shots in the outfield or shall he leave 21 shots in the outfield? Staying put, he leaves uh, 21. Coming around, he leaves 20. He duplicates a 5, though. He says, ah, 20 is fewer than 21. Sixes might be a little problematic. Three, two is a swing number. Would not have been so good the other way. Swing numbers are good to consider, not just shots. But, be that as it may, Alan hits, he maximizes coverage of the escape point, that his own 10 point. Victor comes back, he makes that 21 anchor. Doggone it. Why does he keep making that 21 anchor, says Alan. Now what do I do? Shall he break his five prime? I think not. I think he should just bring his builders in. As he is doing. 15-7 and 14-6. Only paying off to double six hitting. Well, there's double two. All right, keep the four-point board. Clear from the back. Six one. Alan does not care about winning a gammon whatsoever. He just wants to win the game. So Ooh, there's a six-two goodbye. I think he was right not to leave a trailer in the outfield. Otherwise, he would have had to leave. Eight to one. He rolls five, two. There's a six prime. But he's got two checkers on two points, so he's not guaranteed of keeping that six prime. In with a double eight, oh, one, two. Do I come to the edge of that prime? Well, it's not the edge because he hasn't broken it yet, but it might be the edge. And he might actually get a shot this way. I think he was quite correct. A beautiful 3-1, well, it wasn't a pointing number, but it keeps the 6 prime, slots slots that beautiful point, and now Victor says, aha, well, I'm not going to let you just make that 3-point with impunity. And Alan stays out, not so bad. And a 4-1, shall I slot the 6-point and maybe anchor on the 22 if he hits me? No, I shall not. I want him to... And trying to try to think like a grandmaster, think like Victor. He's going to give himself a spare three to play. He does not want to be hit. He wants he wants to have make Alan Tish play awkwardly, bearing in. Everyone keeps fanning. No legal play for Victor. No legal play for Alan. Uh, it's a 5 1, so he slides to the three point. Now, finally, Alan Tish is in with a 5 something. 5 5, Joker, 6 prime. He goes 9 to 4, probably correct. It's a spare in range, he can slot with a 3 or an 8. Slot safely. And make, of course, the point with a 3 3. 4 2. All right. Spare into the 5 point. 3 2. Victor breaks and clears safely his 4 point. Double twos is a loose hit. And does not wish to move his spare checker down to the deep 2 point. So Alan goes to the 14 point. Victor fans, it's almost over, but it's never over till it's over, as the sage Yogi Berra supposedly said. Double six, close out. Spares on the four, two, and one. Six, one. Clears the six point. Victor fans, blot number is six, five. Alan does not roll block number 6-5. He bears one chipper off the 5, and he says, I don't want to leave you any block number, sir. Oh, 
six five. Oh, I wish I left a block number and had an extra checker off. We come down to even. But it's unlikely to matter. Alan is just a big favorite in the game. Double three is a checker off. Is way better than no checkers off. Because now there's an even number of checkers left for Victor, but Alan says, ha ha, now I go from odd to even with a double three bearing a three. And Victor misses with a four three. Oh, ugh. That could be a really cost well. It's unlikely to matter. So that's Jen now. And that's that's it. Alan Tish has won that match. The Masters Finals in Montreal against one of the world's best players, Victor Ashkenazi. It's a fine victory for Alan. And an exciting match. So I guess that'll be just about it for the, it for this match. And I'm not sure what's up what's up next. But I'll be around for a while. Maybe maybe there'll be nothing up next because it's late and the finals are to be played tomorrow. Congratulations to Alan Tish, says someone on the stream chat. I'm offline. Okay.